Okay, you're good. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dan. Christian music is metal. Well, it's more than just metal because there's a lot more alternative subcultures than just metal. But Christian music has to be metal because there's so many people who like it. The New York Times did a study back in 2008 on students, and they discovered that students in general in their range was high school listened to about two and a half hours of music per day. That was in 2008. Think of how much easier it is for us to listen to music now. Back then, you know, it was MP3 players. Now we have it on our phones, iPads, computers. It's everywhere. So it's definitely grown since that 2.5. But how much of our music are we listening to is Christian music or faith-based music. A lot of us don't really think about it. And when we do, we definitely think more traditional style Christian music. You know, your hymns, your slower songs. Sort of the things that you would hear on Kayla or other Christian radio stations, not your average type of music. I'm not trying to get you to change your taste in music at all, because you know music is personal and everyone loves what they do. But I want you to consider just how vital and important it is to have alternative genres of Christian music. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of Christian music just to give a brief background of where faith-based music sort of began, how it's evolved, and why it is important. From there, I'm gonna to touch a little bit on traditional music because, you know, that's what we grew up with. It's what we know best. And then lastly, I'm really going to focus on alternative Christian music and why it is so important to our culture today. Brief history lesson. It, Christian music, well, not necessarily Christian, but religious and faith-based music was dated all the way back to Egyptian culture. Then it was only used for worship to the god or gods that people worship, depending on your culture. Only worship, nothing else. When the Roman Empire came around, it was time for a change. The Catholic Church, along with Judaism, Islam, and Buddhism, decided to incorporate music into more prayers and more worship instead of just keeping it that one thing. And from there it grew to sort of what we know today as the worship in songs and prayer. So traditional music, what is it? It was originally a form of worship and it was one of the original forms of worship. It started off as hymns, which are straight from the Bible for the most part. You know, you can look through the Bible to see what David said and sang to Christ, and you can look through a hymnal book and find a rendition of that. It's what we grew up with a lot of times. It's also considered gospel music and contemporary music. Um, a study was done on hymns, and it was done by Howard, Kevin Howard, and he said that hymns are beloved because they share the richest richness of the gospel and the beauty of Jesus Christ in a catchy and a memorable way. So a lot of people argue that traditional music, or specifically hymns, is the way to go. And I'm focusing on hymns mainly because that's what I grew up with in church. I remember sitting in the pews and pulling out the book and while the speaker's talking, just flipping through and thinking, oh, I think I could just play the song on the piano. Or did we sing the song? So I remember growing up with hymns, and depending on your church backgrounds, um, I feel like that's what a lot of people can relate to. See, hymns are one of the most traditional forms of music. And according to Howell, 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 Paul Thorne, he says that hymns have to have a certain standard of performance, meaning you have to know the notes, you have to be able to sing the notes and harmonize, while more of the modern Christian music and the alternative styles is more recording. You know, it's focused on production and getting it out there instead of what it truly sounds like. He also said that it integrates the music and the words, meaning you're looking down at the page of the hymnal book and you're, you're seeing it and you're bringing it in and you're also sending it out instead of just looking at a screen. And that was his last point, was we have to look at a screen a lot of times in church when we sing songs. 
He said, when you depend on the projection to display ham text, you're bound to, to do so when you're singing music in a space outfitted with sufficient media. Meaning, it's kind of hard to, to sing songs that you don't know the words to if you have to look at a screen every time you sing them. So why alternative music, and why is it so important to our culture today? One reason is because of how far it reaches. But before I really get there, I want you to know what alternative music can be considered and usually is considered. It is everything from rap to hard rock, and you know that includes subgenres, hip hop, punk rock, other things and pretty much every subgenre of metal there is out there, and believe me, there are way too many to list. But these types of music reach a completely different audience than any traditional type of music. This is a chart, it was a study done, it's asking students to listen to, to say their one favorite genre, one genre that they would be okay to listen to almost at all times. Pop came in first with about 30%, while rap was in the very least with only 4%. I know it's not a completely broad study, but it just shows you the variations of what people really listen to to what they don't. A quote said by the person who ran the previous study was people listen to music as a means of coping with life's challenges, feeling of moral conflict and guilt, and a source of encouragement and means of special bonding. What's important about this is put yourself in this situation for a second, okay? I go up to you and I'm really excited. I just got this new song and I've been listening to it all day. You know, I just found this song. It's amazing and I want you to hear it. So you're doing work or something or maybe you're just eating lunch and I'm just like, hey, you wanna listen to this song? So I basically force you to listen to it. In that situation, how many times have you actually listened to the song? I know for me, when someone does that, I just kind of put in the headphones and tune it out, or just listen to the beat and not pay attention. I'm not interested in it. Why am I gonna listen to it? So music, like I said before, is very personal. So if you're not interested in something, then why on earth would you listen to it? Which is why Christian music in the traditional stance doesn't reach people who are into the more alternative culture and style that's just not what they're into. A Christian rapper known as Lecrae, for the record, if you do not know him, he is amazing, 10 out of 10, do recommend. When he was asked on his opinion of Christianity, he said this, we've limited Christians to salvation and sanctification. Christianity is the truth about everything. If you say you have a Christian worldview, that means you see the world through that lens, not just how people get saved or what's wrong. This means writing about other things than just heaven and the glory of God. While music, while that music is necessary, the Christians need to embrace that there need to be believers talking about love and social issues and other aspects of life. In the end, alternative music is very powerful, but it's also very unorthodox. And because it is so unorthodox, a lot of people are turned away from it. It is, sorry. It's different. And a lot of alternative cultures can scare people. They're not used to it if they don't like it or something. But in reality, it is extremely vital to reaching people. And if Christianity is all about saving the damned, then what better way to reach them in a way that they will love? So um, it's better because it doesn't require you to look at notes and you can enter into the moment and experience of it, the emotion.
evolution of it? Is that why it's better? It's more or less, it's, it's better, well, not necessarily better, but it is so important. It's an important yes. alternative because, because of these because things. who it reaches. Who it reaches. Because, you know, going back to the example of not wanting to listen to a song that your friend is really into because you don't like it, you know, take someone who is very into metal, you know, one of your hardcore people. They're not going to want to sit down and listen to a song that is more slower paced, you know, talking about the love of Jesus Christ and or how he right. loves us. The traditional hymn. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're not going to enjoy it. But if you were to take a song that had a similar meaning or simply the message of God and put it into the genre that they enjoy, such as metal, they're going to love it. And if they figure out what it's saying and like look into the meaning, they're more than likely going to reach salvation that so heavy metal has a kind of ambience about it that's very jarring, irreverent, um, you know, half the world kind of attitude, right? Um, is there a biblical basis for that kind of tonality? Can you use the book of Ecclesiastes to get that? or? Um, if, we're, if we were to put any of the Bible to music, is there anything that would come out heavy metal? I think it all depends on how you write it. Um, there is one band, um, I've seen them live personally, I'm friends with the leader, <coughs> it's called From These Ruins. And whenever I first heard them, no idea that they were a Christian band, or as they said, faith-based band, is how they preferred to say it. Later, you know, during the show, in the middle of the show, all of these metal people, metal culture people, you know, he stops and says, you know, we are a faith-based band, like, this is our testimony. So it's more of being able to connect with them on a musical level, you know, something they enjoy. There is messages in the music, and the song they continue to play was called Unwanted, which was a very personal song for them, you know, talking about hard times and struggles, but how God gives them a purpose. Is this who the audience is, those that feel unwanted, it feel can, marginalized? It, and I know personal experience, and especially in alternative culture, we are different because we don't feel like we are wanted by people. You know, we are kind of outcasted from people. So, yeah, a lot of times people do feel very unwanted or like they don't have a purpose or a meaning. And this genre of music speaks to that felt emotion? Very much so. And a hymn would. A hymn for a lot of people would just be too slow or... Well, you know, if they're very against religion, it'd be too religious for them, and they wouldn't want to deal with it, basically. Any question? Um, so, like, in church services now, we see, like, a divide between, like, the traditional services and, like, the modern services that have, like, the choir and, like, the praise band, and, like, the songs are already very different. Did you find in your research, like, any churches that were, like, utilizing this style of worship or do you think that like these this genre is trying more to reach like the unchurched in america like the people who are kind of done with church and like because it's definitely a category of people who are like no church is like ridiculous like i'm a christian but i'm not going yeah well see okay my church is very much what you're saying like the, the division but they're also doing a very good job of merging it the bands that i'm focusing on like from these ruins and other more hardcore metalcore bands are definitely more reaching the people who are against church and unchurched. Who don't go to church. Yes. You're not going to hear from these ruins play in your church. If you do, where do you go to church and please let me go with you. So they're definitely focusing on reaching out towards the people who would really never set foot in a church if they could avoid it. Anyone know of any heavy metal churches? I know in the 80s there was a series of them along the California coast. I found a little bit on that, but there wasn't enough information. I don't know if they continue. 